Hello, welcome to some more chemistry time. I'm your host, Mr. Hicks, and I'm ready to be your chemistry teacher and teach you a little bit about molecular formulas. So at the end of this, uh, you should be able to ident identify uh, molecular and empirical formulas that are sort of related to each other in some way. We'll see that. And then the other thing we should be able to do in the end is to uh, calculate molecular formulas from molar masses and empirical formulas. And I'll show you how to do a couple of examples of those. Quick review here on empirical formulas. An uh, empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of atoms for each element in a compound. And molecular formulas is the number of atoms for each element that's in the compound itself. And I have some examples here. Um, here's glucose. And glucose has our formula C6H12O6. But its empirical formula is CH2O. See how we've reduced it down? We can divide everything here by 6, and we've reduced it down by that number. It's kind of like in its lowest whole number ratio, or the lowest terms, if you're thinking like mathematics. Same thing here with hydrogen peroxide. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, is the normal formula for hydrogen peroxide. But its empirical formula, if I reduce that down, is just HO. And then finally, benzene here, C6H6, it's a molecule made of six carbons, six hydrogens. But the empirical formula of that, when it's reduced down to its lowest terms, is just CH. So we can see that the difference, or the way to relate empirical and molecular formulas to each other, is that they're still going to have exactly the same ratio of atoms in that compound. It's just that one's going to be multiplied by some factor. The molecular compound is going to, the formula is going to be multiplied by some factor. That's going to make it bigger. It's going to multiply all of the coefficients, all of the uh, subscripts, excuse me. Now, the question is, what we want to be able to do is find what that factor is. Scientists are able to calculate what empirical formulas are. If you didn't see this before in one of my videos before on how to find empirical formulas, you may want to jump back into the series a little bit and see how to calculate empirical formulas from percentages or from masses. And that's very common. We can do that even in simple high school classrooms were able to determine what empirical formulas are. Um, the uh, other thing that is easily uh, attainable through experimentation is what the molar mass of different compounds are. So um, with those two pieces of information, the ratio of the atoms and the molar mass, we're able to come up with what the molecular formula is for individual molecules. Now the way we find that factor and the way we make that jump from empirical to molecular formula is through this right here. It's through a ratio of their masses. Okay, It's the ratio of their masses that enables us to make that jump. You see, when I go from CH2O to C6H12O6, you can see that that is like a factor of six. This one over here has been multiplied. You know, it's kind of like I multiplied it by six in order to get that. That's the factor that we're looking for. So when I use this term factor here, that's what I mean. It's gone from CH2O. I've multiplied everything by six. I get CH, C6H12O6. Likewise, this one, I've multiplied by a factor of two, right? to get that. So all of the atoms have been multiplied by that particular factor. So how do I get this factor? Well, let's take glucose as an example here. Um, I'm going to take the molar mass, and generally in a problem, the molar mass is given to you in the problem itself. <clears throat> Unless you're in an advanced class where maybe they can have you find the molar mass of something through some experimental data. So uh, the molar mass, it, we get from the molecular formula. And uh, so in this case, the molar mass for uh, glucose is 180. How did I get that 180? I got it 
from taking the each of the elements and taking their subscript and multiplying it by the the values on the periodic table. So that's 180. I'm going to do the same thing with the empirical formula. Now, either in a in a typical problem, you're either given the empirical formula or you're given the percentages and stuff, and you're asked to find the empirical formula. So here, this case, we have the empirical formula here, <coughs> CH2O. And if I add this up and do just like a molar mass for the empirical formula, so carbon's 12, each hydrogen's 1, so that's 2 more, oxygen 16, and I add all those numbers up, guess what I get? I get 30. And 180 over 30 is 6. See there, that's the same factor as what we saw that these were multiplied with here. So by taking the ratio of their masses, molar mass, the mass of the molecular formula, and divide it by the mass of the empirical formula, when I add it all up, that will give me my ratio that I can use to multiply the empirical formula by to get what the molecular formula is. Let's see this one more time. Hydrogen peroxide. The molar mass we're going to get from the molecular formula, H2O2, that's going to be uh, 32 and 2 more, that's 34. And I'm going to divide it by the empirical formula's mass, OH, that's 17. So 34 divided by 17, that's equal to 2. And you can see that's what we multiplied this by to get from the empirical formula to the molecular formula. Let's take a look at a couple of our uh, examples here. Here I have acetylene. It says it has an empirical formula of CH and a molar mass of 26 grams per mole. See how they're giving us what the empirical formula is. And they're giving us what the molar mass is. The molar mass is the molecular formula's weight, right? So I'm going to use my formula that I've had. I want to find this factor, and it's going to be the ratio of the molecular formula's weight, the molar mass. I'm just going to put MW, the molecular weight of this, divided by the mass of the empirical formula. So I'm going to put EFW, empirical formula weight, down there. So the molecular weight was given to us. The molar mass of this is given to us. That's 26 grams per mole. And the empirical formula, that you're going to have to calculate. So I got carbon is 12, hydrogen is one more, that's 13. So I can see that my factor here, when I divide these two into each other, my factor is equal to 2. What do I do with that 2 now? Now I'm going to go and multiply everything in my empirical formula. And so my molecular formula becomes C2H2. That was an easy one. Let's check out how we can meld this together with our empirical formula problems. So here I have one. The analysis shows that we've got something with 40.68% carbon, 5.08% hydrogen, and 54.24% oxygen. And then it also gives me a molar mass. So, and then it asks me for the molecular formula of the compound. This is not asking me for an empirical formula. However, I could see I'm going to have to do an empirical, going to have to find an empirical formula from this percentage data here first, use my factor with the molar mass to come up with what the molecular formula is going to be. So let's get at it. Remember the saying is that we're going to change it to grams, then we'll change it to moles, divide by the smallest, and make them all whole. So here I changed it to grams. I'll change it to moles.
Next step, divide by the smallest. And when I do that, I get a value of uh, 1 here and 1 close enough to 1 down there. However, for the hydrogen, I get 1 and a half. So this is the part where I have to make them all whole now. Since I'm left with a half, I need to divide or multiply by 2. So everything's going to be multiplied by 2. And that would get me 2 and 3 and 2. What do those numbers correspond to? Well, our empirical formula, of course. So keep everything in the same order it was given to you. And the empirical formula then is C2 H3O2. This is our empirical formula. Now I have to take it to my last step here. I have my molar mass. I want to find the molecular formula. So I'm going to set up my ratio. I know that on top I'm going to have 118 grams per mole. On the bottom I need to calculate what the empirical formula's mass is. And when I look at that, the empirical formula mass is about 59. So when I divide those two into each other, I see that that's a factor of 2. Now I'm going to take this factor of 2, multiply it by my C2H3O2 for my final answer of C4H6O2. Well, there you go. Um, I know that was a lot of work, and it's probably one of the uh, biggest things that you have to do until you get to the stoichiometry unit, where things kind of get a little bit long and hairy in there, too. But this has um, been a lot of work here. So, as usual, I have one more for you to give a try, and uh, then I'll let you know what the answer is when you're finished with that. So, here's one for you. Go ahead, press that pause button. Okay, how did you do? I hope you did fairly well. So uh, I'm going to skip just a little bit the empirical formula part here. You should have found that this has an empirical formula of C5H7N. Oops. This is my empirical formula. And it says we have a molecular formula, or a molar mass here, of 162.26. So we have to set up that ratio. So I'm going to take my 162.26. I have to calculate what the mass of this is. So I've got uh, carbon has a mass of 12, so there's 60. And uh, I got uh, nitrogen is 14, and then I have seven hydrogens on there, and it all comes out to a grand total of about 81. So 162 divided into 81 looks like 2 again. And again, I'm going to take that and multiply it. So my answer, the molecular formula, is C10, H14, N2. Well, there you go. What we've been able to do is relate empirical formulas and molecular formulas and see that they're the same ratio, just multiplied by some factor. And then we were able to figure out what that factor is by taking the ratio of the molar mass of the molecular formula and divided by the empirical formula's weight would get us some factor in which to multiply the empirical formula by in order to get our molecular formula. Well, good luck with your chemistry, and I hope to see you again.